I brought notes. I'll try not to read them. Okay, probably by now you've noticed that uh, there hasn't been a new turtle update for a while. What actually happened was I uploaded ahead of time on a schedule all of the videos you've seen up until now for turtle. So they were done a month ago almost. We're kind of shifting priorities right now. The whole purpose for coming out here in the first place was so that I would have time and could write my book. Okay, I've got this book that I've been writing off and on for about 10 years. Now, literally, it's it's not taken 10 years to do it, but I started it about 10 years ago. And then about six years ago, I stopped and did a complete start over, changed the complete um, direction the book was going. So this was back when I lived in Austin. Uh, I'm just getting to the point, I'm looking at a section of it now that I had included in the file the time when I started it and it was literally six years ago and it's just like wow okay so there was part of it from 10 years ago and then I started over about six years ago that's the Mars Clipper book that I've talked about every now and then okay before I forget uh, we'll put it up on screen Blah. Um, I've got a free preview on a website and you can go check that out. Uh, you, can, you can just read it off right off of the website. It's uh, broken down into chapter sections. What happened was when I was writing the original book, I realized that I started it at a really good spot. It's like, okay, you're right, you're ready to launch. Okay. But then after, I, the more I wrote on it, I was like looking back on it. I'm like, well, nobody knows how it started or anything like that. So I thought, well, let me just do a quick flashback to how it actually started. Okay. So it's it kind of like we go through this big action sequence and then it says, well, and then how did we get to here? And then we go dot, 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 drop back to the introduction. Okay. So I had a lot of fun writing the introduction and just recently I finally got to the point where I looked at all of it and it's probably the introduction is about 400 pages long. And I'm like, oh, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a nice short introduction, right? So I went through it and I really tried to edit it down. I'm like, well, there's no way I can make this into like a short chapter as an introduction. It really needed to be essentially a prequel, right? So I thought about it. I'm like, well, let's just spin that off as its own little thing. And by little, I mean 400 pages or something like that. Um... Anyway, so what is on the website at marsclipper.com, look for episode zero free preview or something like that. Um, that's the introduction to this. So this could be its own book by itself. I'd, I'm kind of like just thinking I'll leave it up there for free. Uh, if a bunch of people really want to see it in a book, it wouldn't be that hard. Uh, all of my books are on Amazon. They're print on demand. It literally doesn't cost me anything to create the book. You know, Amazon takes their cut out of it. I get a little bit when they're done. Fine, right? So if, if people see episode zero and like, oh, can you make this into a book? Yeah, it'll actually, you know, be about a week. Um, put it into a book format, upload it. We can also do it as a Kindle. So that's a possibility if a lot of people have Kindles and would like to read it th that way. I could take episode zero and make it into a Kindle. Okay, so that's it. So basically, when I moved out here to the ranch in the first place, my whole goal was get to a point where I didn't have to keep working just to make ends meet. Now I've got the ranch is paid for, the house is paid for, I don't have the truck, I don't have insurance. My total monthly budget is about $200 a month right now. And half of that is food. Okay, and then you guys keep sending me food, so that means that whatever pesos I have left, I can put into bicycle parts or something like that. Uh, we're not quite there, um, but we're close. Uh, I've got about $45 of Patreon money coming in now. I've got uh, Google money, or I should say YouTube money is going up right now. So we're close, we're actually close. Um, 
it looks like you know and you never know the trend you know the the epidemic kind of screwed things up a little bit it's only my first year monetizing on youtube i had to get to a thousand subscribers before i could start making money off of youtube so it's only my first year of doing that so i don't have a good trend of how things are going to work yet i suspect advertising money is going up because christmas is coming and then usually i think after january it drops off again so by next year will be definitely fine i think numbers are keep keep coming up so that's cool uh if you do want to help out, Patreon is the best way. Um, look for my contact page. It's in the link in the description down below, and you can uh, set me up on a dollar or five dollars or whatever on Patreon. It adds up. It really does make a difference. So thank you for that. And definitely thank you for all the people that have helped support me and keep me going. So good. Um, so episode zero is the free preview um going forward now i'm at a point where i've got time and it's been the weirdest thing getting used to i don't have a job anymore you know and I'm, I'm not sitting here with a lot of money i'm just kind of making it just right but wake up in the morning and i keep thinking what do i have to do today and i'm like no sit down and write it's kind of a weird feeling you know so that's that's taking some getting used to hey i gotta be hey guys Okay, um, the goal, and this is kind of why things are changing. I've been looking at episode, or in what I'm calling season one, or Mars Clipper. In my head, I've already got about the next four or five books laid out. So when I started writing it, I was actually thinking of turning this into some kind of a series of shows kind of thing. So I just called book one in my notes it's season one so if i if i talk about season one that's what that's all about um so from here going forward i should have i'm expecting to have book one of mark's clipper done by the end of 2020. i've got the first draft done once you got a first draft you can go through and edit faster so that's the goal is uh, to get book one down to about 300 pages and then it'll go up on Amazon, print on demand, and you'll all know about it. Um, I'm also launching Mars Clipper, the YouTube channel. It's been there for a while, but I haven't done anything with it, really. So whenever I was talking about Mars Clipper before, I would tend to put those videos on my main channel. Okay. Um, so that's the next step. If you're interested in the Mars Clipper um, book and universe i'll just say look for the link for mars clipper let me back up a second just for anybody that's new that hasn't seen this yet mars clipper a fictitious uh, sci-fi type book that i'm writing the short version it's, there's never a short version for me sorry um we're setting it basically now or near term in the next five years you know and i started this 10 years ago so basically now right it's a shipping company that is going to operate in the route between earth and mars kind of the way the spice trades and shipping in general works okay so think of it as kind of a combination of like the mayflower um get to the new world kind of a thing also the wagon trains and then eventually the stagecoaches the uh when the railway railroad got put across the country it's mars clipper is a way to get people settlers miners scientists to mars okay we've waited since the 60s for nasa to get us there it hasn't happened and so my thought was we're, we're seeing companies like SpaceX already, okay, they're going to put something on Mars. You know, they're going to have the ability to probably put people on Mars before NASA does. Okay. So in my mind, when I was writing this, SpaceX really wasn't a big factor when I started. I just came up with the idea of a company that could do it. And then I have to hurry up because SpaceX is catching me, right? Which is kind of cool. So... 
the idea is we're going to have a regularly scheduled service going back and forth between Earth and Mars. Eventually, we'll set up way stations in between. Like, you know, you could get off the train someplace for a few days and then get back on the next train and then keep going to, like, for instance, the gold rush. Okay. So it's kind of that mentality. It's, um, and it's, and it's got elements of mystery science theater in it. It's got some elements of probably Firefly, although not quite that cool kind of thing. Um, I'm keeping it simple as far as I'm trying to write it to sound technical, but at the same time be easy to read. You know, if you're, if, you know, you're not really big into sci-fi, you might still have fun with it kind of thing. If you understand some sci-fi or if you're a NASA geek or something like that, yeah, I'm going to throw stuff in there that'll, that'll make it sound good. But at the same time, you don't have to know everything. Okay. So that's that book should be done by the end of 2020. Okay. When the book comes out, I'm going to go back through the original notes, and then I'm going to launch the comic book series version of this, which may come out as comic book, may come out more likely initially as a web comic. And my goal has always been to make this into a video series for Mars Clipper. So I'm not really an artist, but I've got software. So if I can create the characters, and you've seen a little bit of that already, most of it is dialogue driven. Okay, you know, my character and the robot talking all the time. Okay, so with a limited number of sets in software, I should be able to create, you know, your morning briefing, there's lots of jokes going back and forth there, then we go out and we do something, then we come back, and it's just day to day life in the spaceship kind of thing. So that's going to be next year. Okay. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, so what happened to Turtle, right? So Turtle jumping ship on that. Uh, Turtle is the the go kart that I'm building, the pedal powered electric four wheel bicycle thing. All right. Still, it's still a thing. I'm kind of at a crossroads on it, though. It's it, it was taking me way too long, and I just got to the point, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to just stop that, get the book going, and then come back to Turtle. Okay. Um, I've got... The issue with Turtle is it was so many kludges all tied together. It's just the more I... The farther I got into it, the more I'm like, I don't really trust this to go off property with it. I don't want to be... 15 miles from home and then the thing breaks up, you know, I could break a wheel off or something stupid like that. Well, what am I going to do then? You know, it's a long walk home. Yeah, I can probably get one of my neighbors with a truck to haul me home, but it's, you know, that's not the way it's supposed to be, right? So I'm kind of like looking at it and like, well, do I want to kludge it together and get it to the next step or should I just wait until the money catches up and do it the right way? And I'm kind of torn on that. So I thought, well, rather than putting a lot of time into it now, let me just give it a wait for a month and see how I feel. Okay. Um, one of the issues, I don't really like how it's working with the bicycle wheels. It works, but it's not ideal. What I need is something a little bit more. I've been looking a little bit. I like the idea of using motorcycle wheels instead of bicycle wheels. So I'm kind of just looking at that. Um, the rear axle, it's only a 5 eighths axle. That's not big enough. I should probably go to an inch just so that I have a little more strength. Um, I could do something like there's go-kart kits where you buy the rear axle and it's already built up and then you just put your wheels on it. So a, a, a go-kart rear axle might be the way to go. So what I've got now still works. Um, I've also got some more of the battery parts coming in. Uh, some of them are already here. So I can noodle around with it and get to the next step. And then kind of like, you know, I'm using I'm using Turtle 1.0 for testing motor and batteries is is really the, the direction it's going. The front axle, the wheels are doing this right now. Or no. Yeah, this. They're in. Okay. They're, the whole thing is bending. But that was the first version of the front axle. So what I should be doing on that is rebuilding the whole front axle, but I'm kind of waiting to see if I can just wait 
until I get motorcycle wheels and then build it for that? Or could I build the sub axle and then put the spindles on the end and then swap out spindles when I get the motorcycle wheels is a possibility. Uh, when I talk about motorcycle wheels, I've actually seen on Amazon, they've got mini bike kits. Um, you can buy a wheel, comes with an axle, comes with a brake rotor, comes with a hydraulic brake handle. You know, the whole setup, um, like $100, $150, okay, for everything. All right. If I use that and drop it on, I would have a complete front wheel set up with disc brakes. That seems like a good idea, right? Right now I have no brakes, so that's kind of a good direction. I'm not ready to commit to that yet until I get a couple of other things worked out. So for right now, the bicycle that I'm riding to town, I go in a couple times a month. It's working. Just stay with that. All right. So that's what happened to Turtle. It's just kind of, I couldn't do everything at the same time. So I thought, well, let me get the book finished, put it out. If somebody likes it, great. If nobody likes it, then I know I'm not going to put a lot of time into the next one. I think that's about it. Let me just show you a couple of other things that we've got going on, though, just so you know that stuff is happening. All right, this was kind of a funny side project. I've been using a Raspberry Pi, literally a little $35 computer. As it's, it's not my main computer, but I've been using it a lot because it didn't use very much power. Okay. Lately, I finally, with the new solar panels that uh, Houston Firefox donated, plus the other ones that he also donated, the big computer that is awesome. I finally have enough power to run it in the middle of the day. That's what I do my video editing on now. Okay. Before that, I was doing it on one of the laptops. And then I've got a Chromebook that runs for about eight hours on its own battery. So I could run that. That's what I did most of the writing on lately. Okay. But it doesn't have a very big screen. So this is my, my problem. Day to day, I do not have a life that I can have just one computer and do everything on. For instance, that computer, that laptop, can do video editing, but it only has about an hour of battery life. It took a lot of power, okay? So if I'm writing, I would use the Chromebook. If I'm editing, I would use the laptop. Now I can use the big computer. The thing with the big computers, I can run dual monitors, plus I've got another, you know, I've got three matching monitors here, right? So when I was running the Raspberry Pi, I could run the little Pi and the 24 inch monitor. It just gives me more space. I can see what I'm doing better, okay? Well, one of the problems was I've, the Pi I have is a Pi 3. It only has one gig of RAM, okay? What I realized is if I'm just checking my email, I can do that, or I can write and that works just fine. If I try to go on, for instance, Facebook, all the ads start loading, pretty soon the thing crashes. It just ran out of RAM. Okay. Only has one gig. All right. So depending on what I'm doing, I could change computers and get the most out of what I'm doing. It's kind of how it is. All right. So I've got two Raspberry Pis there, one there, one there. One's not plugged in. But I was running, I was getting to the point, it was just frustrating. I'm like, you know what? If I could run a bigger computer, it would be better. So then I remembered in the bus, I've got two of these and two other computers that are, um, I don't know that the other two are complete anymore. Uh, this one I bought from Goodwill, that kind of thing, right? So what I'm looking at right now is I'm checking out what's on here because I haven't looked at it for three or four years. So I'm moving some of the files and then I'm going to reinstall a newer version of Linux on here. And then this one, I think, because it doesn't use very much power, I think it uses about as much power as the laptop did. So that means I should be able to run this for 8 or 10 hours a day on the current system. That's what I'm looking at. So I'll play around with that. But it's got twice as much RAM as the little Raspberry Pi. It's an older computer, but I don't need very much. If I need to do video, I'll do it down there. Okay. So that's kind of, that. that's what this is. But that's this whole pile and that whole pile and um, 
for anybody who remembers the old computers, it's still got a BIOS battery. And right there, a little coin battery. That was dead. The thing wouldn't start, right? Um, <laughs> I'm in the bus. I took apart four computers, and then I found my digital level that also had the same size of battery. And out of four computers, they were all dead, but I stole the, the battery from the digital level to get that one going. Yeah, you know, because it's been sitting for four years, hasn't been running, right? Yeah, it's just kind of one of those weird things, so got that going. But I've also got a spare. I've got a, a same, I've got that computer again. So I've got two of those and then two other ones. It's like, you know, I used to work in IT kind of stuff. So anytime I'd see a computer in the dumpster, I'd pull it out. And if it ran, I'd use it. If it didn't run, I'd st you know, take the parts out of it. So, yeah, that's also why I built such a big desk. So that's that. Um, that shouldn't be going on for, you know, that's not like a multi-day project, hopefully, but yeah. Anyway, so that's that. Let's go see what else is going on. It is a beautiful day. I mean, just aside from a little bit of wind, it's just freaking beautiful out here. Wearing shorts. Uh, yesterday on the bike, I rode in, got some packages. It was almost too hot, right? Yeah, just awesome. So yeah, there's the blue bike. That's what I'm riding to town, and the trailer's right there. There's turtle, just waiting. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but wheels are not straight. I do have the chains, that's one of the things, but I'm kind of like, well, I need to fix the wheels first, then I'll put the chains on so I can pedal it, and then we'll go back into battery testing. I know the batteries I have are working, but they don't go very far, but I've got a lot more that I can build up. So that's kind of where it's at right now. But it does fit in the shop, so the four foot wide door was enough. Um, oh yeah. I'm building new roads. This is something that has worked out really good. If I need a break from the computer, I've been just kind of selectively taking one bush out about every 10 feet. So now I've got a road that turtle will fit on when I'm ready for it, right? So why would I need a road? Okay, well, the way the property is set up right now, if I can go straight south, well, actually, I'm not gonna say straight south, but we'll just, the property isn't straight to the lines. Another road goes that way. So here's the gate. I added this. I kind of feel weird cutting into a, an old fence, but it's like, well, it's on my property. I can do what I want, I guess. But it just, it felt weird to do that. So I cut the fence and then had to splice because when you cut it, it, it pulled a little bit and you can't, anyway. So on, I'll just step over, it's easier. On the other side of the fence, this is still my property, okay? So I got probably another 100 feet before my property line. So the fence line doesn't track the property line, okay? Well, if we look this way, you can kind of see the tracks, okay? So when they built the fence, there was a Jeep track or whatever that they would drive along and check the fence or whatever. Well, they haven't drove that for years, but the track is still there, right? So now you got bushes growing up in the middle. Well, on a bicycle, that would actually work, but turtle is four wheels, so I had to clear it out. So from here to the county road, a uh, quarter of a mile approximately. It's a little more actually, okay. But I've been working this in sections, so I come out here for an hour or two, knock out some bushes, and you know, off we go. And I'm actually more than halfway to the road already. So yesterday when I came back on the bicycle, I was thinking about it. It was just a rough day on the bike. I didn't feel like pedaling anymore and I was getting close. And I'm like, you know what? If I walk across the desert, it's better than pedaling because from here, it's only a quarter of a mile. But if I go on the road that I, I would go there and there and then come back. 
So this way I'm only going one side instead of three sides. So it's, you know, it shaves off three quarters of a mile or something like that. So it's, you know, I, you know, going to town is 15 miles. And so you get to the last three quarters of a mile, you'd rather not do it. So, but yeah, so the, it's not just soft sand. I mean, you can see the tracks here. I rode across this yesterday. A lot of the road I can ride on. I mean, a lot of the desert I can ride on. So the parts that I hadn't cleared yet, I just kind of got off and pushed the bike around between the bushes. But you can see, I mean, there's a lot of spaces that if you line it up, you can get between the bushes. Some places are completely closed off or, you know, just completely covered. But some places you could actually get through pretty easy. So that was it. So I've been doing road building. I am going to do more on this gate, but that was good enough for now. Um, I think what I'll do is make about a four foot section that I can go through easier. And then later on, if I need something bigger, I've already got the space. You know, if I get, get something bigger again, honestly, I don't know. Um, I may never get another truck. I swear it wasn't windy when I started. That's about it for now. Otherwise, everything is good.